concept behind my talk is all about JavaScript and Internet of Things. Uh, so, JavaScript is like a fully functional programming language with uh, prototypal inheritance. Uh, Internet of Things, as you all know. Let me just throw an insight into what my talk is and what is the principle behind connected devices. So, I read uh, Internet of Things uh, does not simply imply having a device which is connected to the internet or having a device which is simply has hardware. Okay. So, the principle behind connected devices, you ensure uh, a physical uh, circuit or an embedded circuit has a full function and that is being connected to the internet for a purpose. So, an example can be uh, for the connected device uh, for the physical sensors. It might be heartbeat sensors, gyros or accelerometers, and ultrasonic sensors. Uh, so, uh, so uh, the, uh, the talk is mostly uh, two parts. The first part is about what uh, the IoT should offer and how are you planning to integrate JavaScript with IoT. And the second part is about project JIOT. Uh, let me come to, the, uh, come to that part later. So the first point is all about uh, how am I planning to integrate JavaScript with Internet of Things. Okay. So let us suppose you have a, a hard disk or a flash drive which has a media content. So in order to uh, make sure th the content is available to all your clients or uh, if you have a measure in, uh, if you have a measure to serve the content to all your clients, you use the concept of media service. So media service is nothing but streaming your file content to the users, and uh, whatever it, whatever be the type of the content, be it an MP4, be it an MP3, or be it an image, you serve the content to your client. So uh, uh, there are fundamentally different concepts of media service, but let me skim it down and say the most uh, noted points. Uh, your media server should handle the CRUD operations and it must uh, have endpoints which use, which supports the uh, get, the post, the delete and the options. Apart from that, uh, let me say how am I implying to connect my concept of media servers with Internet of Things. If suppose I have a big CPU or a big uh, machine, a uh, desktop machine and if I starting, the, if I'm star planning to start the hotspot and if I'm planning to connect uh, if I'm planning to uh, enable the content to the users for whoever is connected to the hotspot, then that is like a very tedious job because you have entire big uh, physical space being occupied. So the concept of connecting IoT with JavaScript plays uh, here. So what I'm planning to do is, if you have a Raspberry Pi or if you have a Galileo, if you have any uh, single board motherboard circuits, then you can actually run an operating system and you can run a cron. So as soon as the system starts, you can have a cron running which ha starts a hotspot and whoever is connected to the hotspot you can pipe the local host to the connected client so what i'm implying here is uh, let us take a use case scenario let us say that uh, i have a raspberry pi which has a wi-fi module and as soon as the system starts the raspberry pi operating system starts i start the uh, i start the wi-fi and whoever whoever may be the client whoever may be uh, connected to my hotspot, they can have my content serving. They can view whatever content I have, and they can, uh, depending on what I am planning to serve them, they can actually view them. So the process of uh, going through how to write a media server and how to do that, I think that is available in Google. Uh, it's not so difficult. Uh, you, you have to ensure some things. One is uh, writing a script for uh, executing the start of the cron. And apart from that, you should also make sure uh, the uh, the system acts, uh, system as a whole functions uh, foolproof, and it does not uh, allow unknown uh, supported mind times to download as soon as you process a request. I know I'm a bit technical there, but let me uh, 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 let me explain what I'm meaning there. So suppose uh, the whole concept of media servers is based on browser-based requests, right? So if you have a browser and if you are uh, posting a request like uh, play this particular mp4 file or play this particular mp3 file as soon as the moment you post the request the request is being uh, uh, taken by your media server you process the request and you play the uh, you play whatever media which the user is willing to see but the point is you have an advantage you have a challenge the advantage is the very fundamental concept of having HTTP 304 within your stack is you can 
support the content which is not being modified and route it and serve it to all the clients who are being connected to you. So with a minimal caching mechanism and with a minimal uh, meme cache mechanism, you can absolutely serve any big file or any uh, file which you have in your media, like which you have uh, 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 as your media content. So the point is, not only supporting uh, the heads, uh, the uh, most of the CRUD operations, you should also support the concept of uh, mind types. So the mind type is the uh, the content type which are willing to serve the uh, serve the people who are connected to your media server. So if you only support this particular file, if you only support this particular file, that is actually a bad notion. Because if, if your media server is only uh, limited to this particular scope, then it is, uh, then you have, uh, you don't have a win-win situation in order to upgrade the model. Because the point of writing your own media server is you have to write modular code. That is one point. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, I didn't mention the point of Go, but uh, in a Golang, you, uh, in Golang as well as JavaScript, you have the very fundamental modules, the net uh, HTTP in Golang and the uh, HTTP module in Node.js. So the point of writing your own media server is not adding fancy modules to your application and bloating your application. Because all of the uh, uh, JavaScript uh, community agrees to the point that NPM is the largest ecosystem. NPM stands for the Node Packaging Manager. NPM is a large package, uh, large uh, ecosystem. We agree to the point. But when you have a number of useless uh, packages and fancy, fancy packages for each small purpose, then the whole point of having those many modules does not serve it. So using the core modules to the fullest and using the core modules in order to write your media server is actually a very good notion, point one. Point two, uh, we agree to the point if you have uh, be a, a, a big media content like as in if you have large mp4s if you have video files which are very large in size obviously the ability of your media server to serve your content uh, is not flawless so in order to make sure you serve flawless content point one is using the HTTPs uh, protocol 304 to the uh, fullest is one point point two is how are you using a caching mechanism uh, if it comes to uh, uh, Node.js, it is Varnish, since, I'm, since the doc is mostly JavaScript related. Uh, Varnish is one package where uh, you can actually uh, add a mechanism in order to serve the uh, caching uh, for your media server. So, the point in that uh, is mostly about how are you supporting your uh, media server with different mind types, point one, and how are you supporting your media servers without using the uh, third party modules? Like, if you have most of the third party mo modules within your application, then uh, you have a lot of dependency issues because if the module breaks, which, whichever module you are depending on, if the module breaks, then you have to ensure your code is not depending on the module. So the, fundamentally, you have to write your own endpoints, be it a get endpoint, be it a post endpoint, you have to uh, write your own endpoints which are dependent on the core modules. So that is one point we should actually uh, note. Yeah, and then uh, before before I uh, say this, uh, let me make sure, I, I don't know whether this is uh, part of good practices, but let me make sure these are few gotchas which you have to make sure while you're writing your own media server. One is, you should not uh, depend on Node.js or Node's primary engine to define your own headers, right? If you run your own server and you're counting on Node to define the headers for you, then it is actually a very bad piece of code. Because if you have an unknown mind type or if you have an unknown URI, as soon as the moment the URI is being opened, it automatically prompts you to download. You might have observed this if you open your browser and you open the an unknown file type like a dot data file or dot obv file automatically the moment you open it it prompts you to save file or open with so you have to ensure that this particular thing is not happening so right so uh, i agree to the point that you should support a large set of mime types and you should write your code modular in such a way that you have if you have a new uh, mime type which you are willing to support then you should add it i agree to the point but Depending on node to implicitly define headers for you is not actually a good notion. You should actually explicitly define your own headers. And in order to ensure this thing is happening, you can actually have a very uh, small uh, uh, very small hack for this. 
One is have a .csv file within your repository, right? And the .csv file can contain all the uh, MIME types which are willing to support it. And if the .csv file uh, has all the uh, uh, supported MIME types, upon each request posted by the user, have a regular expression matching of what the uh, uh, request is and skim down the JSON in such a way that take the uh, uh, content type header out and whatever is uh, unknown content type, don't just allow the uh, user to download it. Instead, go for a 404 or a post message saying that yeah, this particular content is not supported by a media server and uh, please uh, check, uh, go back to the main directory or something like that. The point there is, don't uh, prompt a download each and every time. That's actually a very good uh, notion. Because it, is, because it is part of good practices. Yeah. Uh, I, I failed to, uh, I did not mention most uh, mechanism part, like how this thing physically works. Before I dive into that part, let me make sure what I'm uh, implying uh, with additional uh, media serving concept. So, at the start of the talk, I mentioned about Internet of Things. So, the point here is, you have your own uh, Raspberry Pi, or you have your own Inter Galileo, or you have whatever is the single board motherboard. You have your system, you have your operating system running, you have your Wi-Fi module which is attached. You start your hotspot, the clients are connected, you serve the media with your media content, uh, you serve the media with your media server, and whoever is the client who is connected, you can actually use the concept of caching as well as reverse proxy. So let me say how this can be helpful. Uh, you, uh, whoever is a client who is connected to your hotspot has an IP address which is uh, uh, defined by your uh, uh, defined by your DNS, which is part of your media server. So as soon as the moment you have your DNS defining IPs, if your application is running on your local host, you can actually enable the person to view the application which is running on your local host. So if I start the uh, web application or the media server within the Raspberry Pi, which is running on local host 8080 or whatever may be the port, that particular thing can be routed to uh, the user each and every time he opens the browser. So with minimal uh, uh, configuration in that part, you can actually have uh, this particular thing being added to your media server. That is one point. And as far as I mentioned the uh, concept of reverse proxy, let me also extend this in saying that caching is a very good mechanism because serving your um, uh, content is one point and caching the content is the later because if you use the concept of meme cache or if you use the concept of uh, the uh, readers being part of this, you can actually ensure the application is not bloated and as well as the media server is not having a bottleneck situation. That is two points. Uh, one thing which I uh, mentioned about media server is uh, you have your uh, IoT device and uh, you uh, the whole point here is connecting your hard drive. So if you uh, are aware of this, so each and every time uh, you have a hard disk being mounted, you have that being uh, uh, go, uh, gone to a, di a directory, be it slash SDA or be it something. So each and every time you connect a USB or each and every time you connect a hard, uh, hard disk, you randomly have uh, a mount point. So if you have this thing fixed to a particular mount point and you don't know how uh, the next uh, connected uh, hard disk might be mounted at, you are actually writing another uh, part of a bad practice. So in order to ensure that thing is not happening, you can actually go to a directory in etc. The, if you go to the directory etc, you have a file called fstab. So at this point, you have the options, uh, you have the options uh, wherein you can specify the mount point. So here, so here, the whole of the media which is running on the GNU or Linux based operating system is uh, mounted to the directory called media slash media. There, if you define your own directory, uh, like uh, media, whatever be the uh, name of the directory, if you define the directory, 
and de uh, depending on the UID of the uh, SSD or, or your hard drive, each and every time your uh, your hard drive is being mounted, you can direct that to that particular uh, uh, mount point. So here you are ensuring that you uh, you physically know you uh, you within the aspect of your application, you know where your media is being mounted. It is not like you do not know where the media is being mounted. So that is one point which you have to ensure while writing that. Okay, let me come to the second part of the talk. Uh, it is uh, it is called Project JIoT. It is uh, an open source project. It is available on GitHub. I'll provide the link at the end of the talk. Uh, so uh, the point of having a media server, like all, is one point. Like you have a lot of media servers. You have many uh, open source uh, organizations which have their own set of uh, media servers running. So how this thing is different from all of them? So one thing is, there is this concept called Web Speech API. Okay. So JavaScript does not provide or JavaScript does not support the whole concept of Web Speech API, still ES5. As the rollout of ECMAScript 6 started, uh, they started supporting with the minimal experimental features of the Web Speech API. So the Web Speech API is nothing but supporting speech recognition uh, and supporting speech synthesis, speech grammar, speech list. So the whole point where I'm hinting at here is, if you have your media server running, you have an application which is uh, uh, running, and whoever may the user be, if suppose he posts a voice call saying that play this particular file or play this particular file, you can so you can actually uh, take the voice request of this and uh, you can have your uh, uh, fixed uh, dictionary or fixed thing wherein you process the request or if the file is available, serve the content. So the point of using web page API is you are minimalizing the job of the user in order to traverse the directories or traverse whatever be the large file content is and you are allowing him to view the content in a better way. So, let us say this is better part of a UI UX concept or let us say you are uh, providing him at a ease of use to view the content. That is one point. Second, uh, yes, as I mentioned, this thing is an experimental concept. This is not supported for all the browsers. It is only supported for the Chrome as well as the Firefox. Although Firefox does not support a continuous function, uh, it is only supported for the 44 and the Chrome for the 33. So. As I said, it is all about writing your own API and serving the uh, having endpoints in your API in such a way that uh, you process the request and depending on the request, serve the content. If it is not available, post for a 404. So entire thing is being linked to the previous thing. So this particular thing, the web speech API concept is just like a module which is added to the previous application. So uh, that's it, I guess uh, I'm pretty much done. If any questions are there, I, I guess I'm done. Guys, if you have questions, uh, please ask. We have still have time. I still, and, we still have time, and that's it. Yes, I'm done. Questions offline if you don't want to ask. I mean, it's okay.